or we hear these, this debate about evolution versus revolution and which camp do you sit in? Uh, I think that the, the part of this silver lining conversation is the Kims of the world sitting around tables. I think I, what I'm excited about is that they're gonna have a louder voice. Um, and people will be like, hey, you know, that's a, that's a, this has gotta, uh, gotta be, um, you know, more listened to. So I, the, the idea of what the normal was before and what a new normal could look like, I've, um, as you know, kind of sitting around the table with some of the partners that we've been working with to slowly evolve these processes. I mean, one of the challenges is that the supply chains, uh, you know, in some cases are 18 to 20 months long. So you're not going to end up with a revolutionary way to do things to be the real hard work to change the way things can be made in a more sustainable way or consumed in a more sustainable way uh, really is about our uh, uh, really long-term processes that are about evolution. So I, I sit on the evolutionary camp on that, but I'm, I think what's really exciting is that the Kims of the world and the other sustainability people that sit around tables uh, we'll be able to have a larger impact on what that evolution can look like and, and, and how the products will look uh, coming out of it. And, and, and how can those supply chain, world supply chain processes, which take a long time to change, uh, you know, for, for use to be an input to new manufacturing, that's just a, it's a, a lot more complicated than it sounds. Uh, but I think that evolution had started, but I think it's going to just hyper uh, accelerate on the way out, but it's still going to be a slow evolution. The change is going to come, but this is a long-term play, not, uh, not an immediate one.